Out in the snowy desert, snow falling. Sean the TMP here. What's up, guys? Perfect testing conditions, wouldn't you say? Yes, love it. Love it. Perfect. Yeah. Let light snow fall. It's nice and cold. It's not too wet, not too muddy, but it's a good test for the guns. There ain't nobody out where we're at. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So we have the whole place to ourselves. Welcome to another ISSA episode. You guys will like this one. Is it still awesome? The Keltec Sub 2000s. Interesting video. Interesting video. Watch it from start to finish. By the way, that is a Gen 1 in the foreground. That's mine, 9mm, modded. And that's a Gen 2. That's Sean's 40 Smith Sub 2K, right? Yep, yep. Recently got it. And, uh,. Needed something that could shoot 40 cal ammo, but uh, I wanted something a little different. I've got a few pistols, I got a lot of nine millimeter, very capable of crossing over to each other, same mags, all that stuff. And I wanted something that could shoot a 40, different, fun, and um, and so the Sub 2K came to mind. And uh, so I bought it and uh, this is its first outing, so. Are you crazy? They tell me that 40 Smith & Wesson is done. It's obsolete, you should never buy one. Uh, I think it's still got a, a good place in the world, um, especially if you get a good hollow point. I mean, it really does put a lot of energy out there, and um, it's obviously not going to be a long distance round, but hence the sub 2K. Well said. I agree. I like 40. It's just not as SA, SAWC efficient as a 9mm. Very much agree. Like, that's where, you know, I was looking at these stick mags. So you got, you know, the 9mm, we got a 40. This is the, uh, the 40 stick mag. So you got 22 rounds versus 33. And so that's, uh, that's something. It's, it's something. You got 11 extra rounds in there. So, yes, I mean, you're right. You don't get nearly as many rounds, but you do get to put a lot of energy in whatever you're shooting at. So for anything close quarters, I think it still has a good place in, in the tactical world. Now, this review in field is not intended to replace my very thorough tabletop reviews of which I've done probably three on the sub 2k dating back to about 10 years ago so look those up I have all the details in there I talk about the generational improvements between gen 1 gen 2 we're not really going to cover much of that here just some of it this is really answering the question yep. would I still buy one mm -hmm. is it still awesome enough with current competition to purchase a sub 2000 yeah is it's it a great so awesome? Question. I think it's an interesting question. Yeah, we do have two very interesting competitive options to shoot alongside the Sub 2K. Mm -hmm. This will be an organic video. ISSA, that stands for Is It Still Awesome? And if you're wondering, I'm never at a loss for content. <laughs> if you're wondering that I'm like revisiting previous reviewed items, uh, I don't really need to. In fact, it kind of gets in the way of other content flow. I have so much to post, yeah. but it's fun. Yeah. It's fun going back, and enough people have asked, especially in the donation environment, mm -hmm. of which he is a part of. Yep. Thank you very much. Uh, they've asked. They said, hey, you know, is such and such still good? Would you still recommend it? Has anything changed in your, uh, your philosophy? So that's what we're going to do here in the falling snow. Mm -hmm. Now, before we get going, I'm going to talk a little bit about the specs to remind ourselves how lightweight and efficient this gun is. Four and a quarter pounds in the Gen 2 just under 30 inches overall length, 16 and a quarter inch barrel, 9.5 pound trigger, feels lighter to me. They have a multi-mag version that will take other mags besides Glocks, apparently. Huh. But you have to buy like the multi-mag version and the, I guess you get like a mag release or something. Uh. But the Glock version is far and away their best seller and that's I think what most people get. Mm -hmm. The Gen 1s have different uh, compatibilities, different magazines that they would fit we talked about on tabletop uh, we've been talking of well the thing has been produced for about two decades now the big differences between gen 1 gen 2 are and again this oops coming out of my box this is a modded the gen 2 has a 40 percent larger ejection port you can see the differences here on tabletop gen 1 gen 2 Metal front sight on the Gen 2, 
This one is a Gen 1 that I've modded. I actually cut it off to a half hood so I can use my red dot sight on it. To remove these front sights with a Gen 1, you basically have to destroy them. Adjustable stock, three position with a Gen 2. This one is fixed. You have a threaded barrel in this one. You have a different forehand that is M-Lock compatible. This one had a different one and I removed it and I think that is a, mm, it might be an M-Carbo front end on it. Whatever it is, I put it on about 10 years ago. So that is obviously not M-Lock or key mod compatible. You have to put a rail on via screws and I'm A-OK -okay with that. The other mods I have with this one is a Tactical Urethane Tube Cover bolt knob bolt knob cover and i think i put an m carbo spring kit in this as well m carbo makes accessories for the sub 2k tactical does as well there are some other companies i think m carbo stuff is good but i think they're very expensive for instance their full trigger kit is 235 dollars for a sub 2k ouch holy crap dude uh, single point sling adapter, they make one of those, that's like 30 bucks. Shell deflector, M Carbo makes, that's 13 bucks, that's so affordable. They have an optics mount that's like 150 bucks. I do like the tactical stuff, it's awesome. And then, let's see, I might have an extended butt pad on this. I got that from Caltech, and then I zip tied it so it wouldn't fall off. Wrapped in electrical tape. End of mods discussion, other than my Hall Sun on here. We both are running Hall Suns, this is a 403R. So it's a 65, oh no, this is just a dot. I'm thinking of the competitive option. This is a gold dot is all it is. And it's getting soaked in the snow here. <laughs> yeah, good testing. Yeah, so I've talked very positively about these. We'll hit it as we move along here. We'll talk about the, the upsides and maybe some downsides of it as well. Uh, we're going to start off with accuracy shooting. And I'm going to do that with my 9. As a reminder... ISSA is about uh, some shooting and then maybe a lot of talking, depending. Wish me luck. Man, this table slick, dude. It is all over the place. This, this will not stay on. Hang on a second. Let me... Middle. Upper left. Upper right. Cool. Cross bolt safety on these, both variations running Glock 18 mags, that is a 33 round stick mag, as I think most y'all have. Let's go check accuracy, dude. It's an excellent option for that thing. What? Excellent option for that thing is the 33 round stick mag. Dude, I mean, they go hand in hand, right? Yep. This is awesome. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. By me mounting this on top, I cannot fold my Sub 2K anymore. I understand that. I'm dealing with it because I just like this top mount better. Sean has an offset mount on his. He'll talk to that yeah. when we start blabbering more. This is one of your rounds, by the way. I'm going to put it in your pocket. Good. How do you think we did here in the snow? Oh, let's see. I'm going to say at this distance, two-inch group. Oh, With a red geez. dot on a slick table in the snow. Yeah, exactly. And I wasn't really taking my time, as you saw. So, not bad. Yeah. Take it. Yep. That's 25 yards, sub 2K, Gen 1, Holosun Gold Dot is what that is. Double those groups at 50 yards with my eyes with this sight. Yeah. If we put, you know, magnified sight on it, better stability, taking our time. I think you can get that at 50 yards with a sub 2K. I know that because I've done it. Yeah. So they're inherently, I wouldn't say like amazingly accurate, but they have really good accuracy. Mm -hmm. The barrel quality on most sub 2Ks very good both between the gen 1 and the gen 2 i own both by the way i just only have my gen 1 out here today right yep no they're great and you know then the question is do you put magnification on a sub 2k 
then are you ruining the, the POU? Let me answer it for everybody watching this video because I know what they're going to say. Let me turn this way so we don't get snow on our lens. Okay. No, no one's doing that. No. They're doing what we're doing. They're either running irons or they're running red dot. Mm -hmm. T and Piers at least. I, I can speak to my audience. I know I'm pretty good. They're using it for its intended purpose and that is a close range PCC. Yep. They're, they're wisely saying 50 yards and under. When I did my tabletop, I said, you might be able to go out to 200 yards with it. I'm gonna amend that, I'm gonna say 100 yards realistically because even out of a 16 inch barrel, the nine millimeter is anemic. Mm -hmm. The only way you can help it is running a plus P, but it's still an anemic pistol cartridge. Uh, it does help with a longer barrel, but I don't look at this as beyond 100 yards for me. How well, about you? No, I agree, I totally agree. And the thing is, that kind of accuracy is gonna work great when you're trying to use this as basically a slightly extended, not quite close quarters battle gun. Exactly. That's really all it is. And so that's yep. perfect. That's all you need. And easier to shoot than a pistol. Yep. That's another thing I hit hard on the tabletops. We'll hit it again here. Is that you take someone who can't really hit with a pistol. They're having trouble with their mechanics, their grip, their trigger control, their breathing. Yes, breathing can be a factor in pistol shooting. Then you put a sub 2K with them, especially with a red dot, watch what happens. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Sean the TMP -er bought this for his wife for the home defense role, right? Yep, exactly. So he's, he is living what I'm talking about. So this is meant for his wife. It's set up for his wife. Yep. Look That's... at the differences between the grips, by the way. Gen 1, Gen 2. Gen 2 on top, the blocky. Gen 1 is on the bottom, kind of that P11 grip. And also the safeties are different. Look, at you have like a a detent ball on yours. Nice. I don't have that. Not that I can see. I still like a Gen 1. Yeah. I yeah. still do. All right, let's move it back. We're shoot steel. All right. Sean's going to take over, and he's going to do some shooting. I'll take over camera duties. This is always very organic and super honest, so whatever happens in field, we show you. True That's or right. false? That's right. If Everybody it's shit, up. we're going to show you that it's shit. If it's awesome, we're going to show you that it's awesome. And here we have falling snow, the curse of the desert in full effect. Perfect. By the way, there's the two competitive options, boys and girls, sitting there in the cases getting snowed on. You're gonna like that. You're gonna like them. Yeah. It's gonna be fun. All right, dude, tear it up. Here comes a 40 Smith & Wesson Gen 2 Sub 2K. Is it still awesome? Nice, dude. No last shot hold open. That is one disadvantage. It'll go close. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Super simple, the Sub 2K. I mean, it doesn't really come more simple than that. Yeah. It has a very heavy two-piece bolt, captive guide, recoil spring, hardened steel ejector, uh, downsides to that direct blowback is that it's going to have a heavy spring to retract. Some yeah. people won't like that if they're like elderly folks, maybe weak people, mm -hmm. sick people, some females may not dig it. Sean. Yeah. Yep, I agree. Uh, racking this thing is not exactly easy. My wife is fairly petite, so uh, she's... She's 275 pounds. <laughs> I wouldn't exactly call that petite, but go ahead, Sean. Kitty, no, that's not cute. true. She's, she is small. She's, cute, she's tiny. She's tiny. like a size one. She's tiny. Her, her wrists are ridiculous. Tiny. Small, so not a lot of uh, strength to be racking this thing. But, you know, if it's already set up and ready to go, you don't have to worry about that. Put the stick mag in there. You got plenty of ammo. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we literally did exactly what nothing was talking about. We went to the range, I handed her a pistol, I handed her a sub 2K, we shot at a metal target at, you know, 20 yards, and she literally for herself got to see how much better she was able to shoot with this thing. And, you know, 20 yards and in, and you know, home invasion, home defense, it's, it's gonna be hands down much mm -hmm. easier and better for hitting targets. You got the rail up there, you can put a light on it so you can see what you're shooting at in the dark. Don't shoot things in the dark if you don't know what they Always are. have a light on your home defense weapon. That's right. And so, Sean just has it taken off for uh, the video. For the video, yeah, for testing. And so, 
Yeah, but it's. Uh, I think this thing is going to be excellent as a home defense weapon. So. Load up, shoot some more. By the way, uh, the Gen 2, again, threaded barrel. This is a 40, so the threading is going to be a little bit different. It'll be 9 16th by 24. The 9 is half by 28. Yep. But they're set up for suppressor use, as you guys know, because you own one already. Those watching this video, I bet you you own one. Well done, by the way. Does that inspire confidence in you, being able to hit so easy with that? It does, yeah. At this range, man, pistol is really tough. I mean, really tough. Experienced shooters would still have a hard time hitting the bad guy. I mean, that's a, that's about a man-sized target there. Yeah. And so the fact that you can pull up quick and fire off three rounds and hit with pretty good consistency, it really does inspire a lot of confidence. Hands down, better than a pistol. Amen, brother. As I missed. <laughs> <laughs> As you were talking about your high confidence That's level. Right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now okay. other companies that do accessories, I remember Tandem Cross, Aztec, KZ, that's a Botac company, Red Line. And I don't know if all those are still making them. And that, that four end I have, that might be tandem cross that might be a tandem cross for and i forget watch the tabletop top i think i talked about it there go ahead uh-huh figure out where this thing is hitting Sorry, let me guys. speak to this real quick so, because okay. so we had a lot of trouble yeah, earlier in the day Trying to get this thing mounted, I put the M lock, a small run of M lock Picatinny rail on here, and I had mounted this 45 degree optic on the side of the gun so that I could actually fold it. And, you know, I'm thinking that's pretty slick, that's a good deal, until we came out here and tried to zero it, and it was all over the place. Turns out one of the M lock screws wasn't quite right. So, undid it, put it back on there, made sure it was held solid, so it's on there firm now, and then we mounted the red dot back on and then try to do more shooting. Still wasn't accurate. And so then I switched gears and went ahead and put it right on this uh, hard mounted top rail. And that seemed to have fixed the problem for the most part. And uh, who knows, I mean, it could be the mount itself. Um, I don't know. I, I do need to play with it a little bit more, but the consistency on it has not gotten there yet. Let me say this, I went with an offset mount on my Sub 2K for several years and I ended up hating it mm -hmm. for whatever reason. And actually we did running guns in the desert. There's videos showing us. Yeah. I talked to the, the weirdness of it and maybe you guys are having better luck, but I, I just seemed like I wasn't hitting really good with it. Mm -hmm. And there was a weird parallax thing going on. I mean, to now ideally you yeah. turn the gun at a 45 angle and it shouldn't make any difference to the bore, right? It shouldn't. So you're just in line with the bore, but I had issues with it. Yeah. And that's another reason I'm top side now. Yeah. That it's just simple. It's simple to zero. Vertical is vertical. Horizontal is horizontal. Yep. When you go oblique like that, you change all the axes yeah. and it's just a little bit weird. I think that's one of the things going on with your gun right here. It could be. It could yeah. be. And that's, and that's a valid point. And that's the thing is, you know, you got to realize if you're going to throw a red dot on this thing and you don't want to do, or if you can't for whatever reason do the 45 degree optic, you lose your folding capability and yeah. you're just going to be stuck with the gun as is, which that might be okay. But if you're using it as a truck gun, you're trying to throw it in a small bag under the seat, whatever you're doing, you lose that folding capability. You're, you're kind of missing out on one of the big purposes of the gun. So. Well, you're also missing out on this. <laughs> that's right. Well... But you actually, when you have an optic, you can still fold it, but just not all the way. Yeah. So yeah. surprisingly, yeah. even with an optic on the top, you can still crack it in half, fold it, and it will fit in like a very short AR-15 case, mm -hmm. but not as svelte and compact as it is with iron sights. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, you're up. Hit it. Right. Try to hit something this time, all could right, you? Do you think you can do that? Let me make sure my lens is clean with all this falling snow. I think we're good. Right. Hit it. There you are. All right, we're back. Okay, we're back <laughs> in the position. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Nicely done. Here, take over. All right. I'll start a shooting with the nine. Good. I'll take your gun, bro. Right. We'll talk a little bit about caliber here. This is how I carry my Glock 33 round mags. 
usually, not always. This is a Blackhawk Industries submachine gun magazine pouch, drop down configuration, no Velcro, which I love, at least not on the clasps here. So in snow, as you can see, they still work. Fits perfectly a Glock 33 round mag. Now the downside, if you're running this pouch down here, that's a lot of weight to get going with momentum if you're running. I do have vests that I can attach this up here. This is a better location for it in my book because it's more handy and it's up towards the center of gravity of my body. That's what I call it. Anyways, I'll put a link to this below if they still make it. It's a great way to store your magazines so they're not banging around. They usually don't fit in an M4 pouch. They're just too long. Again, this is a Gen 1 9 millimeter version. Which caliber do I prefer? Uh, I still like 40. I'm not gonna say I don't like 40, I really do. But like Sean pointed out, you're just getting so many more rounds in this magazine. You're getting what, 11 more rounds? Mm -hmm. yep. This is a 40. These are readily available. They're completely legal to own in most states. If you live in a communist state, you need to move out. Just saying. Uh, and nine is an effective cartridge, especially out of a 16 inch barrel for a pistol caliber. Mm -hmm. You want more power, run plus P. Let's move back. All right. Let's challenge ourselves. So I still prefer the nine millimeter version, dudes. That's my bottom line on that. I think that's what all y'all own. I do know this, I go to the gun stores and it seems like the sub 2Ks and nine millimeter Glock configuration sell very quickly. Yeah. I mean, through the whole time I've done TMP, right? Yep, yep. Occasionally I'll see one on the shelf that's a nine, uh, but then I come back a week later and it's sold. So these have sold very well the entire time I've been doing the project. Good sellers, man. But does it mean that it's still awesome? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. You might be surprised at my answer. Maybe not. Nice. Laughing at the curse of the desert, the sub 2K Gen 1. Now, Keltec does say don't run aluminum case. I have done it and I only had one jam through three magazines fired. Doesn't really matter. Aluminum case is hard to find. CCI does produce aluminum cased ammo, but the hollow points I haven't seen in over 10 years. Not a factor for most y'all. Steel case, I have shot steel out of this and it was 100% reliable if memory serves. I always come out here in the desert and I'm always <laughs> amazed how lightly nine millimeter hits the steel. Right, Sean? Yep, yep. We're here at about 65 yards. You see there's a time of flight issue. Shoot, tink, shoot, tink. And then when it gets here, you can hear it. It's not like a pellet gun, but you can tell it's not an ultra powerful cartridge. It just isn't. Mm -hmm. Again, if you go plus P, different. Seanster, you're up. All right. Good luck, sucker. Over to the 40. 40, I hope your sight works at this distance for the parallax crap you got going. Yeah. No, oh, no, that's not mine. It's too many rounds. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a Mac? I do. Cool. The nice thing about these is they're shorter and they do carry it in regular AR-15 ammo pouches. Yeah, yeah I got the 10-speed yep, <coughs> pouch on the Blue Force. I love that vest. Uh, guys ask me about this all the time. Yeah. That's a 10 speed pouch and a plate minus or yep. Molly minus or something plate it's called. Minus. Yep. I'll put links to that below. I think Optics Planet still carries those. That's awesome. I They're really awesome. I like this vest. Lightweight. Did you buy it or did I give that one to you? Oh, I forget. I bought this one, yeah. Did you? Yeah, cool. Off the review. <laughs> Good luck, sucker. All right. I'll need it. Oh, shit. Oh, there we go. I was aiming a little low thinking we had to... There you're on it now. Yeah. 
There you go. Good job. That's low left, so aim right plate. Okay. There you are. Nick. Cool. Yes. Now pop some rounds through mine okay. and tell me the differences in recoil, if any at all. Uh, new mag needed. I think these are affordable. The Sub 2K, really affordable for what you get. Would you agree, Sean? Oh yeah, Oh, for the money, for sure. That's that's one of the things that, that kind of guided me to it too. It's like, I didn't want to go out and spend $800 on something that I could pop a bunch of 40 through and as, as a pistol car or carbine. I wanted something that was going to be affordable and the Sub 2K fits right in there. I so you're not a you're not on board with going out and buying a B and T APC nine for like eighteen hundred bucks. No, not even close. It's a nine millimeter PCC, dude. Right. Actually, I think it's more than that. I think it's like two grand. Ouch. Twenty two hundred, something like that. It's insane. Yeah. What well, you got to ask yourself? What are you really doing with it, right? Because exactly all bullet launchers are doing the same thing. You're putting lead on target. Right. Whatever you do to get there. Is, is just going to give you a little bit more accuracy, but how can you justify when you can hit with this easily at 65 yards going out and spending, you know, what, eight times the money? You go out and you buy a really expensive gun that ultimately does the same thing. That's where I have a really hard time. That's You're talking value. POU right there, bro. Yep, that's the So value. that you've put some thought into it. Yep. So if you look at reliability, durability, and accuracy, and maybe some second cool in there. Sure. That's that's really gets right down to business. We could throw that in, yeah. Second cool. All right. How do you like nice. that VG on there? It's nice. Yeah, it's nice. You know, um, the other thing I'm noticing too is that, well, you do have the the pad on here, which I need to get one of those too. Um, that, tube cover. That helps a little bit. Yeah, that's a tacti cool tube cover. Yep. And uh, but the recoil is a bit less. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's actually more significant than I expected it to be. Does so. the trigger feel different than yours? Uh, a little bit lighter. Tell me on the next round of shots. Yeah. Let me see here. Yeah. No, I, I like the trigger on this. A little one bit lighter. lighter. It's just yeah. a little spring kit I put in there. That's all. Okay. Yeah, no, it's nothing major. A little better. Yep, yep, yep. And you know what? Here's here's the honest truth too. If I wasn't trying specifically to find a gun that shoots 40, and I had if I was just going out to buy a sub 2K, that was my goal. I would get the nine millimeter. Amen. So, by the way, that is an Olight Balder CR 123 yes. powered. So it's an integrated green laser and light combination. Ooh. And uh, it's not zeroed for the gun. I have it for tonight, uh, for just lighting purposes. Yeah. Yeah. There's a laser yeah. on it. It's just in laser mode right now. Yeah. But if you come here, that should be Switch both. It. That's laser light combo. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hard to see the laser with the lights. Now mounting it on the side and then, you know, bore sighting it, a uh, little bit tricky. It's the same parallax issues. Yeah. It, it can work, but it's not ideal. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's going to cross from left to right across the bullet path, mm -hmm. and it'll be perfect for one range and one range only. <laughs> right. That's... And then you're, instead of drifting up and down, yeah. now you're trying to drift left and right. Yeah. It, it, it'll be in the ballpark. Yeah. Between zero and 50 yards, it'll be fine. Right. right. And that's what that gun's built for. Yep. Yep. Works good. Yeah. I've done a lot of PCC reviews. There's great options out there. Most will be way more expensive than a Keltec Sub 2K and heavier. Yep. Uh, a couple I've reviewed CZ Scorpion Evo 3. I haven't done a Palmetto AKV maybe one day. Yeah. I like this thing. It's awesome, huh? I like it. Yep. No. It's hard to say anything bad about it. Sure, you can say bad things about it, but I tell you, you bring it out, you shoot it, it hits, great optic, easy, compact. Reliable. Reliable. Reliable, Good even right. with FMJs. Yep. So, I have one bad thing to say about it, ready? Go. If you don't have a red dot on it, you have to hunker the freak down on that tube cover. There you I, go. 
That's a downside to all sub 2Ks. You got to get your fat chipmunk cheek <laughs> buried into that tube Hard. to get a good sight picture. Hard. Hard. It's Which way better with an optic. It makes the kick off of the tube even worse because you <laughs> burn right. your cheekbone right on it. Yeah. Yeah. No, this, I'll tell you what, the red dot changes the gun. Agree. It really does. It's it's almost a must. I, I don't I don't think I would buy a sub 2K and not put a, a red dot on it. It's just it's not worth it. So it's funny that in this Issa series, I always bring out the oldest gun I have to represent the entire line. <laughs> so this is a Gen 1. I didn't bring my Gen 2, you have one. All right. But it's interesting, and all the complaints we had on the Gen 1 have been fixed. This sight's gone, the mm -hmm. forend's fixed, mm -hmm. larger ejection port, stuff we talked about. Yep, yep. Uh, another one that I've reviewed that I love is the Air Precision Epic 9. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. The Ruger PC9, the mm -hmm. Charger, those amazing, but it's way, way heavier oh, yeah. than your four and a quarter pound sub 2K. Mm -hmm. CMG, CMMG Banshee, I think I have reviewed that one. Haven't reviewed a SIG MPX yet, maybe one day. If you guys give me like 100,000 views on this, I'll do it. There if you, you don't, I won't. Yeah, yeah. Are Let's, you empty? Uh, let me see, I doubt it. Let me see. Nope, I got a couple left. Here I'll you take over. There you go. And then we're gonna get into some fun competitive options. We're probably just about out with this one. It's probably close. Yep. Couple more. Wow, that VG on this is so nice to it's have. It's nice. It, it is nice. It's so fun to have. What a fun, fun PCC this is. Yep. Now, still enjoyable to shoot. Really is. So, this is what I was talking yeah. about. I mean, your you angle. can kind of fold it. Now, I've done the offset mount like he has and you'll be able to fold it more. Look at how simple this thing is though. It's just got a simple bolt, simple recoil spring, and it works. Nothing fancy, are you ever gonna take that red dot off on that sub 2K? No, uh-uh, I'm gonna accept this. Yeah. Because I love, like Sean just said, I love having this so much. I love not having to come down here with hearing protection on and trying to get my sight picture, which I can do, I've done it on camera a lot. I can do it. So right here, I'm in the sight right here. So I could shoot this way, but look at where my cheekbone yeah, is. Yeah, uncomfortable. It's like right down there, as opposed to this. That's yep, why. Yep. That's the negative thing I said. Competitive options. What would you choose? Not fancy. Is the sub 2K still awesome? Well, let's answer that right now, and then we'll get into competitive options. The Sub 2K is completely awesome. Still, uh, I don't see anything in the market that competes with it in terms of lightweight, compactness, and affordability. Sean? No, nope, I agree. I totally agree. Unless I'm missing something, which I have done before. This one falls into the category of a classic. It's awesome. And the colorized ones are really cool. They've come out in FDE, yeah. olive drab. They got some nickel ones. Ooh. Do they have nickel? Yeah. They got some nickel furniture. Mean, like you can the barrels out. nickel plated? Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of pimp. <laughs> it's, it's I don't know sweet. if I do that one, but <laughs> I could see some guys doing it. Yeah. Now I'll go on to the internet preparing for a PCC or braced pistol option review. And inevitably I run into the comments, as always, when a new PCC comes out, guy will say and comment, I would buy it, except I need a 10 millimeter. That's all I run. I've always said in tabletop, I'll say out here in this ISSA episode that that's a bunch of horse shit. You don't have the money for 10 millimeter to shoot what we're doing today. We're going through probably six magazines a piece of FMJ. Go ahead and tell me what that costs in 10 millimeter. Okay. Uh, and you got to train with it. You got to practice with it, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say you're going to go through... Yeah, let's say you train and practice pretty good, 500 rounds of 10 millimeter. I don't know anybody that does that. Not even reloaders don't do it because the components are expensive and hard to find right now. What I say on tabletop, I'll say it here with this competitive option, which is awesome coming out of case, is if you're concerned about power of a nine millimeter, and by the way, I'm probably yelling because of my hearing protection, sorry. 
Uh, we are too, but we're giving you a realistic engagement distance, right, Sean? Oh, yeah. 100 yards inside is what we're saying. Yep. It'll work fine. But if you want more power, raise your hand if you like more power. I do. But you don't want the cost of 10 millimeter. Not that it's available in that anyhow. Dude, AR-15 pistol. AR-15 pistol. I mean, what's not to like about this unit? Right? This is a Delton Lima pistol, previously reviewed. It's set up for the Aurora Black night vision device, which will piggyback right here. Go watch my Aurora Black review. This is the test bed for it. This is still running a Nightcore C17 dual mode flashlight. Has an IR illumination mode and a regular light mode. And then I just put this on. This is a Midwest Industries blast deflector or blast diverter it's called. So I'm running this instead of a can today and I've shot it already and I gotta say it, it works pretty good. It's not a suppressor, but it's throwing that sound away from my fat head, which is good. So a competitive option, we're gonna say right here, in the snow falling is an AR-15 pistol. Would you agree with that? Yep, absolutely. If, if I'm getting serious, um, I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys. I'm not gonna be messing around with no sub 2K. It'll be, whoops, I had a round in there. It'll be at least this, maybe something more. This thing is insane, dude. I love this gun. It's gonna be louder. Sean, you're up. All right. Now that's zeroed for steel, but I think it'll be close enough. Right. By the way, that was steel ammo. I was popping out of that AR. Awesome. Look at that thing, dude. I love it. That is nasty. I had to come on this side. That way I don't get snow in the lens. Yep, yep. <laughs> Oh, it stopped, dude. Did it? Yeah, it yep. felt like it didn't feed properly. Just, yeah, I don't know what the deal is. That's brass ammo, too, dude. There we go. Like, uh, I don't think I you're all the way. Assist? <laughs> Just rack it out and let it fall. New round. All right. How are you liking that? Oh, I love it. Oh, this is great. And tell me the sound coming out of that's not going to scare them away more than that thing. <laughs> and I got to tell you, that, that blast deflector is working. It's great. Our it's director, great, whatever the heck they're calling it. Yeah. Dude, because I'm standing on the side, and usually with an AR-15 pistol, yeah. it's insane. Yeah. But it's doable. Yep, yep, absolutely. And look at the form factor. This is not a really long gun that's going to take up tons of space in the truck. You know, for the, for the POU, you know... I think this makes an excellent truck gun. Yep. Excellent truck gun. I would go with this over a sub 2K is my point. Absolutely. And now this is still legal now. They're trying to ban this, the the, the pistol brace. This of is course. a pistol, not a regular gun. Yeah. So who knows what the future holds. It's probably very dark and bleak. Yes. Yep, yep. But for now, it's 100% legal in the state of Utah where we are. Yep. No matter how many times a good guy with a gun stops a bad guy with a gun, they still sit around and say, oh, the guns are the problem. Yep. So, swimming pools are the right problem now. for children dying in the summertime. Yeah, yeah. I don't see us banning swimming pools. Right. Nice fireball on that. Yeah. This would be fun to shoot at night. <laughs> yeah. This thing is killer. Totally would. Delton Lima pistol. Yep. Love it. Sick, dude. Love it, love it. Okay, pull out our next uh, competitive option from the case. Put that one back in if you would, please. Safe it up. 
So we're talking about how awesome the sub 2Ks are. We have established that, I think. Yeah, three rounds left. Okay. Boom. Keep going until it opens. No, it doesn't open. I think it's that mag. Do I have a squiggly mark on that mag? Uh, Turn it, yep, I do. Sure do. That's why, that mag has been a problem. Yeah. That's why I have a squiggly mark on it. So, it's a Lancer, and Lancer mags have been great, but that one has given me problems in the past. So the Sub 2K is awesome. It is highly, highly recommended. You see it being 100% in the snow here, by the way, which is amazing. We're getting a lot of comments, I can see them already, about guys who own a Sub 2K, who love the Sub 2K, probably several. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if guys own multiple Sub 2Ks. But the next competitive option will center on the AR9. And you probably saw the label already. It is the Freedom Ordnance Last Shot Hold Open FX9. Yes. Yeah, buddy. Yep. Another great PCC. Actually, that's a braced pistol. That's a BPO. That's not a PCC. And another magazine dude is in here. It's on the other side. Now, I think I installed an aftermarket trigger in that. It's not a force reset trigger. I don't have any of those. Uh, I'm not against them. I just don't have an, enough ammo to run a force reset trigger. And uh, anyways, those have legality problems too coming on. Total horse crap. You can see my sticker right there. I have a pop four and a half pound trigger with anti-walk pins in it. Yeah. All right, dude. Very cool. You shoot half, I'll shoot half. This is a... FX9 is representing an AR9. And by the way, we're not just doing this for just fun. I want some observations between these three. Yeah. As a truck gun. Yeah. Not your home defense, but as a truck gun, which of the three would you choose? Right. You got to rank order them. Hit it. Okay. Hopefully that's zeroed. I haven't shot that in a while. Yeah. Answers that question. Uh-oh, uh-oh, FX9 going down, curse of the desert. I have not lubed that in over two years, by the way. That's what she said. <laughs> yep, she's on. Yeah. Let me say something real quick. Notice where his hand is. You got to be careful with these brace pistol options. Yeah. You don't bring your hand too far forward. Legally, you can't put a vertical grip on there. That's another advantage of the Sub 2K. You can put one of those little uh, finger stoppers. You can put a finger stop on it. That's legal as far as I know. Yeah, that's a finger stop you have on yours. Yeah. Yeah, so you can put that on there. Throw that on there. It's just a safety addition is all. Yep. Did you change this trigger? Uh, I did. That's a paw four and a half pound. Do you like it? It's a nice trigger. It felt weird when I first stuck my finger in there. I was like, where's the darn trigger? But uh, yeah, it kind of comes down lower. Yeah, a little further out. I but, just had an inventory, so I popped it in. I did, the stock trigger was total horse shit. Yeah, it, it was an nice. AR spec or mil spec trigger. My turn. All right. Ain't bogarting all the ammo, dude. <laughs> Probably left in like six rounds. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love that sight. That is an HS503C circle dot. It's so nice. it has a freaking 65 MOA circle yeah. with a 2 MOA dot in it. shot hold open on that one it's probably because that mag actually there you go freedom ordinance fx9 do i love it yeah it's good yeah great gun great gun yeah like we did so have that. that one stoppage on it though yeah yeah sub First 2k zero stoppages price point on that one mm, i don't remember but mm. it, you could buy at least two sub 2ks for the price of this okay okay so we're gonna factor that in, right? Yeah, absolutely. 
got to be factored in there's a cost value so let's rank order them now from what you've shot truck gun philosophy of use rank order them uh truck gun i'm gonna go with the ar pistol then let me pull it out so we can see it yeah so we can remind ourselves how awesome yeah, this stuff yeah. is yeah I'm gonna start with the AR pistol. That's gonna be number one. Got Truck that right. gun, gonna gonna be the AR pistol, no doubt. I'm gonna pop a few more rounds out of this. Yeah. Because while we're here, this is another Lancer mag. I wanna make sure there's no stoppages. Just a couple rounds, not a ton. Oh, you know what though? I overloaded that mag. Oh, okay. Yeah, I should have downloaded it to like 28 rounds. I bet you no more stoppages. All right, let's try this. Now the load is right. Let's see how this does. Oh, oh. not good, dude. Look at that. Yeah. And we know the gun's running good. Hmm. You know, I'm really tempted to go shoot lube in it, but I'm not going to spend the time. Yeah. What do you What do you, you say? Want another mag? You want me to try? Yeah. Let me see that one. The Lancer mags have been great, though. They've been awesome. We'll see. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Freaking curse of the desert, dude. <laughs> that's a P mag. I mean, that's a yeah, standard, the have been standard really good, uh, thing, Gen 2. You like how I'm shooting your ammo that's up? Awesome. Go for it. <laughs> Here we go. Ready? Nice. My first choice would be an AR 15 pistol. Yep, absolutely. That's just where I'm at. Yep. These and magazines one, weren't doing good today, but the gun is solid. Yep. Totally recommended. Well, and the AR pistol is not just the first pick. It's it's a runaway first pick where I don't even have to think about it. You okay. lay these three guns down. Agree. And you say which one? Uh, the AR pistol. Agree. No doubt. Now those other two, right? So you got the FX9. You got the sub 2K. Huh. Now. Now it's more difficult now, doesn't yes. it? Yes. I'm going to go sub 2K. Interesting. Nice. Yeah. Because it can fold? Because it's more cost effective? Both. Yep. The folding, the cost effectiveness. Um, here, you come over here so I have my back to the snow. That's what I'm... I am primarily going to go with cost effectiveness. Um, the folding is, is probably second to that. Right on. Yeah. For me, truck gun, AR-15 <laughs> pistol, uh, between the sub 2K and an AR-9. God, that's a tough decision, dude. Uh, if it's equipped with a hollow sun, I'm going to call it a draw. Yeah. And I can do that. It's a draw. I'm not going to favor one over the other. If I don't have a hollow sun, it'll be an AR-9, hands down. Mm -hmm. For home defense, I'd go... This is where it's going to get interesting. For home defense, philosophy of use, I'd go with a, with a 9 mil before I'd go with a 223. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to deal with that blast. Yeah. In, oh, in, yeah. in enclosed structure, Indoors. unless I have hearing protection on, I ain't dealing with that. Yeah. So again, I would go between these two. It's a draw. Yeah. Uh, maybe a slight, a slight advantage to an AR-9 for ergonomics, position oh, of safety. Yeah. I adaptability agree. you can put different triggers in it like i did with this one different yeah. grips i love that yeah when you switch from truck gun to home gun i go with the ar9 but yeah me too for truck gun ar pistol or if you're really trying to be cost effective if, if you're just going for straight value i'm just trying to get bang for my buck throw something in the truck that's going to function for me if i need it sub 2k, sub 2K. yeah you should have a sub 2K regardless. Yeah, that's right. That's really the bottom line. Yeah. Is because I it is it. so versatile, it can go to any of those applications and do well. 
How about if you're going from point A to B and without rule of law and you're on your motorcycle? On my and you're going to have it slung over your shoulder. Which one? AR pistol. Ding. Yeah, ding, ding. That's right. Yeah. AR pistol. For sure. If I'm slinging it, AR pistol. Absolutely. Better obstacle capability. Yeah. Beats body armor. It's wicked. Yeah. Yep. But we're not saying this isn't awesome. We are saying that it is awesome. Yep. The Sub 2K is still a hard recommend in the project. Yeah. In whatever you know what? caliber you want. Here's what you do. You sling up the AR pistol, you fold this thing up and put it in the back case. <laughs> <laughs> it's your backup. That's it. It's your backup. Right. We didn't yeah. mention backpacking. Good application for the Sub 2K. Mm -hmm. um, maybe a fishing gun. I don't know if it's my first choice in bear territory, 9 mil or 40. That sucks. Yeah. That's, that's where right. I want more power. Yeah. I'll do like a riot shotgun with 12 gauge slugs or a Glock 20 and 10 mm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. No, and uh, the other thing too, the the beauty of both the uh, the AR9 and the Sub 2K with the nine millimeter Glock mags is these things are everywhere, everywhere. Yep. So if you are transiting somewhere in a without rule of law situation, chances of you coming across something that's going to work in this gun is going to be significantly higher. Correct. So yeah, and it's compatible with your nine mil Glock. Yep. Glock and, 17 and you know, above. AR is the same thing. AR pistol, same thing. Two two threes are everywhere. A but, firm. But yeah, and that's that's one of the beauties. Ooh, such good competitive options. Yeah, <laughs> you like those, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Too bad that AR fifteen pistol didn't uh, run one hundred percent though. <laughs> that's not yeah, great. It didn't like those Lancer mags. Though. It didn't like the Lancer mags today in the snow. Hmm. Yeah. More data. Yeah. More data. Yeah. That's it. We're wrapping it up. Thanks to the donors for motivating me to come out and do stuff like this. Thanks to Sean for helping me out here in the snow. Yep. Keep your sub 2Ks, buy more. That's the bottom line. Yep. They are amazing. You see that they have withstood the curse of the desert yeah. while some others have not. Yeah. That's how it goes. Signing off. We'll see you in the comments.